Hi guys, welcome to the first in like live event at Grand Ireland. I'm so excited. My name is Nzlaki Pakwimikevic. I currently work as a career coach at Dublin Business School. Um, I always just introduce myself as CK because it's the name I was christened with when I arrived in Ireland. I'm going to say 15 years ago, so you can't guess my actual age, okay? Uh, I always say the easiest way to remember my name is think of Calvin Klein, same style, just not as expensive yet. It's always yet, okay? Um, and welcome to just simple and effective ways to improve your CV. So what are we going to cover, okay? One of the ways that we design our workshops in Dublin Business School is always give you six key tips, okay? Six things, because after six, you won't remember, okay? So what we're going to be looking at is... ATS compliance, what is ATS, how do you comply, especially when it comes to your CVs. We're going to be looking at personal statement hack, a quick and easy one for you guys to get through. Uh, we're also going to be looking at who do I talk to. So who are the key people to speak to when putting your CV together to make sure that you have the right information, that it highlights your career history, your experience and what you have to offer to an organisation. Okay? Uh, we're going to be looking at accomplishments, why are they important, what should you put on your CV. We're going to be looking at minimal is best because I always believe that simplicity is key, okay? And then last but certainly not least, we're going to be looking at your commitment. Okay, let's get started. So ATS compliance, you're probably wondering like what is ATS? Like what does that mean? ATS is basically an applicant tracking system that has been introduced into recruitment. So what does it do? It scans all of the CVs that come in, it looks for keywords to match the, per to match the job they're actually recruiting for. Okay, now you need to understand ATS. Why? Because your CV can actually be rejected on small, minor errors. You might not have the right keyword in, your font might be too big, you might not be able to actually register the icons you have on your CV. Okay, and even just in regards of ATS friendly, you need to know what does that look like. All right, so keywords. Every single time a job spec is put into an ATS system, what does that mean? There are keywords that they're looking for. If you look at the criteria, candidate criteria is very important. Is it a degree, a soft skill, a technical skill? What is it that they're actually looking for? Okay, really, really important. On top of that then, you're going to be looking at identifying these skills. There is software that is available, such as JobScan. JobScan basically allows you to input a job description and it actually details what are the keywords they're looking for. What words should you have on your CV to even have a slight chance of being selected for interview? Okay, this is key. If you don't have the academic qualification that they say they need you to have, if you don't say that you've got communication skills, if it's a key skill to have in a job, if you don't have the correct technical skills, your CV is going to be put to the bottom of the pile and you're going to be forgotten about. Remember as well, ATS actually keeps your information on file, which means that the next time you apply, the message that came up the first time that said that you are unsuitable for the job will come up again. Okay? Very, very careful, guys. Second thing then is all about fonts. Okay? I know we want to be creative. I want to showcase how great I am, how much I can, you know, do graphs and, you know, website design, all that stuff. It's important. Absolutely. Absolutely important. However, your CV is not the documentation that you need to have all of that work on. You need to focus on what is it that I am going to contribute to an organization. This is where we're going to be having clear, and that's why I say simplicity is best. It's key. Okay? So here are some fonts that are actually ATS friendly, because any other one, so if it's too cursive, if, if they can't register it, once again, bottom of the pile. You're rejected. We don't care. You don't have what we need. So we're not going to waste time bringing you in, having a chat with you over the phone or face to face. It's no point. Okay? So here are 10 fonts that you cannot go wrong when you're putting into your CV. Okay? Simple. Times New Roman, Calibri, Cambria, Georgia, Verdana. That's what you're going to be focusing on then as well. Okay, the last bit then is just in regards of what is it that I need to have. Your, your apologies, your CV to be ATS friendly has to be in chronological order. A simple font, no bigger than 12. Okay, 11 or 12. That's what it has to be. Um, and the simple fonts that we talked about as well, always make sure to save it in PDF or Word doc. Okay? You can make a CV on Canva. ATS will not be able to register that. Your CV will not be viewed. You will not be called for an interview. And that's it. All right? Second thing then is just to do with your personal statement. Okay? This is really important. It's five sentences that basically summarize 
What is it that's so special about you? Why should I hire you? Why should I choose you to be on my team? How are you going to positively impact my company? How are you going to influence my team? Are you going to be able to reach KPIs? Do you have the key skills? It's really, really important, okay? Which is why you need to leave this till the very last. Write everything else about your CV, all of your experience, all of your accreditations, all of your accomplishments, your hobbies, your interests, write it all out. And when you're done, ask yourself these questions. Who are you? What's your experience? What type of work are you experiencing in delivering? What's your most impressionable achievement, impressive achievement? What's your second most impressive achievement? What are you hoping to do in the new position? So you need to be able to identify where you're going to sit in my company. You know my mission, you know my values. So how are you going to positively impact? How are you going to contribute? Okay, oh, sorry guys. And this is essentially what comes up in the personal summary after you've asked yourself those questions. Okay, meticulous IT technician with four, more than four years of experience in providing T3 IT support and local hardware and software troubleshooting. Commended by management and DevOps team for fast and accurate work, implemented improvements to reduce ticket volume by 9.5% and response time by 3.8%, hoping to leverage these skills to make similar savings for super software. Okay, five sentences five questions that's it five sentences five questions ask yourself these questions okay generic cvs are not going to be accepted generic summaries are not going to be accepted stay away from ambitious stay away from works well on my own as well as within a team it's cliche we don't want to hear it no one cares what is it what is so special about you what's unique Okay, have to think about your unique value your proposition. What are you giving me? That is how you need to assess yourself and your CV anytime you think about applying for another job. Okay, and also the other thing I wanted to highlight here is this individual has said commended by management. Remember the positive feedback that you've received in college when you're working with the communities that other individuals have said to you. If you're struggling to find like where is really, where, where's my key strengths? Just stop and think for a second, what have people said you're good at? Can I just ask you, what has someone said that you're very good at? Just one thing that pops to mind. Leadership, perfect. Leadership, commended by, lead, by management on leadership skills. That means that we trust you to lead. We trust you to be able to communicate strategies. We trust you to be able to influence your team and make that positive impact, positive contribution. Just remember that positive impact all the time. Now, a lot of times when we start writing CV, it does feel like solo work. It's your job, it's your work, it's your experience, it's your life. So how is it gonna benefit me to talk to anybody? Now, when I put the list of these individuals up here, the reason why is because a lot of times we don't know our own potential. So this is where I'd say a coach would come in. You sit in front of a coach and you're like, oh, I wanna do this and this, but I'm really scared. I don't think I'm that creative. You know, I'm not great at talking. You know, I'm not great at this, 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 this. Your coach usually is able to kind of highlight, uh, excuse me, you're the VP of this society. You do public speaking all the time. You have event management skills. How are you not creative? You design all of the social media posts for all of the clubs and societies within the college. This is what you need to focus on. Okay, when I talk about recruiters, ask recruiters what is one key thing that you look for in a CV? Did you know that recruiters actually take five to seven seconds to decide whether or not they're gonna give you a chance? That's it, five to seven seconds. So you need to find one thing on your CV that's like, damn, yes, this is the person we need to hire. I wanna to talk to this person. They may not be a right fit for this job, but I can definitely see them coming into the company and being able to do something else. Okay, so ask recruiters, what are you looking for? What is it all, that, what should I have on my CV that will automatically have you be like, yeah, we're definitely gonna ring this person, get them in. Talk to hiring managers, use LinkedIn, okay? Use a professional social networking uh, platform to do just that. Professionally start to network. Ask the people who are hiring, what are you looking for, okay? I remember something that stands out very clear to me is Jameson has a graduate program that they recruit for every year. And there was this one guy that stood out and they do video interviews. Now, he's called Mr. Worldwide, okay? If anybody is of my era, you know that Mr. Worldwide is a football. 
So he was able to take, you know, something that everybody knew and put an Irish spin on it. And he got selected for that graduate program to the point that his video interview was used as a template to be like, this is what we're looking for. All because of the fact he took it and he just decided to do a personal spin. Okay, that's essentially what they're looking for. A robot can continuously do things. They want you to come in, be innovative. They want you to be able to think outside of the box. Okay, um, so we talked about coaches, the likes of Grand Ireland. There's a CV clinic right behind me. Here's individuals whose job is to work with CVs, help people put together CVs, help people screen them. And they're here offering their time for free, I might ask. Not, not to say that's anything bad, but I'm just saying it's so for free. Um, and they're here and they're going to be offering their services to you. Maybe it's just one key thing you need to change on your CV. Okay? There might be just one thing that maybe gives the impression that you're not, you don't have a hard work ethic or that you don't have communication skills just because you've got to highlight it. Okay? There are now, there is CV software that allows you to build your CV. You pay 20 euro. You put in your information, it spits out this magical CV that will allow you to get any job that you aspire to. I don't believe it. However, I will, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that, oh, there's not other you know, systems that exist to help you, because there is, okay? I just believe that in order for you to truly capture that uniqueness about you, that will make you know, an employer be like, yes, I want this person, you need to write that yourself. There's personal reflection that's involved. The CV software is not going to be able to tell you at 21 when you were trying to manage, you know, working two part-time jobs and doing a master's was really where your time management, effective time management skills came in. Okay, it can't do that for you. Accomplishments. Um, I worked in recruitment for about three years and my favorite question was always, what is your greatest accomplishment? And the reason why we asked this question was just to gauge someone's work ethic, but really to identify what does an achievement or accomplishment look like to this individual, okay? There was a lot of psychology involved in our questions, so there was a reason for it. Sometimes we'd ask you like, why are manholes round? And you're like, what? It's a quest, there's a reason for it, okay? So accomplishments, really, really important. If you can, think of any job work experience where you've made a positive contribution, okay? Now you might just think, CK, like I went in and I did my job but that's still doing your job. You still achieved KPIs. There were tasks that you needed to complete and you did that, okay? Try to remember measurements as well. Try to remember the positive feedback that you got, okay? I remember one key thing for me is that I um, reached 100% recruitment KPIs within my first three months of working my recruitment job. That's important to me because without that, I wouldn't have gotten promoted. So now I can talk about that. Even if it's something as small as, um, you know, that your presence, you know, that you're motivating, that you're influencing, that you put people in a good mood, put that in there. People wouldn't have been able to do some of their jobs if it wasn't for you. Whether you came in and made coffees for everybody or you were just that person, that go-to person in the office where if you had a problem, you go to, sorry, what's your name? Anya, okay, Anya is the person that you go to. That's what you put in, that you were the person for morale, that you kept spirits up in the office, okay? That you are all about teamwork. That's what you focus on, okay? Now, if you don't have a lot of work experience, do not worry, okay? Life experience is where you can actually pick out your accomplishments. Your involvement in the community. Did you perhaps do the darkness into light walk? Maybe you did a fundraiser for Focus Ireland. Maybe you helped out um, fundraising for a hospice, things like that, it happens. Sometimes it might be a personal thing that you did. Because I know a lot of people whose family members have suffered with cancer and the St. Francis Hospice, they actually raised money because they wanted to say thank you for taking care of that sick individual and that family member. That's still you being part of the community. Why not talk about that? You're volunteering, taking time out of your day to help. Talk about what it is that you do in volunteering. How do you help? Is it little kids? Is it to do with, um, you know, the environment? Are you all about sustainability? Maybe that's what you're doing. Is it the elderly, the vulnerable adults within your community? Is it local clubs, the GA, you know, the sports club, youth club, whatever you're involved in, note it down. What did you achieve when you were involved with the community? What did you achieve when you were doing that? And it's the same thing when you're in college. If you haven't already, make sure that you get involved with like societies and things like that, really important. The reason why with societies is because they always uh, link in with employers. 
So anytime a society puts on an event, it's usually sponsored or there will be a guest speaker from um, some type of company that you will want to work for or aspire to work for in the future. And what does that mean? Here you have a front row seat to ask them, hey, sorry, what do you look for in graduates? What is it that I need to do to be selected by you because I aspire to work in your company? You're not going to get that opportunity elsewhere. Okay? Same thing with getting involved in clubs, getting involved in college events, and even just the likes of getting involved in student union. All right? Now, when I say minimal is best, okay, the first thing that we need to remember is that usually what happens is your CV goes through an applicant tracking system, the ATS. Okay? Now, you might want to have graphs. No, don't. You might want to have a picture of yourself. Not necessary. Okay? You might want to showcase how you are so creative with your artistic skills. No. It just has to be plain black and white. Okay, because the system does not is not able to comprehend things such as icons. Okay, and when I say icons, you know that little like envelope right next to your email address because you're like, oh, I'm so cool. Then you have a little phone. You're like, ring, ring, yeah, you can call me here. That's what we're talking about. Okay, there's no need for all of that. It just has to be simple font, not too many icons. If you want to showcase your creative skills, have a hyperlink to your portfolio, your social media, the website that you built. Okay, have a site that has all of the work that you've done because you want to showcase, hey, I want to show you my designing skills or I want to show you my ability to do this. Hyperlink it on your CV. Have it under pro projects, accomplishments, achievements, whatever you have. Okay, not too many icons, like I said. Be careful of your formatting. When I say formatting, basically what I would always say is a CV, you've got your A4, okay? Make sure that you have like an invisible box inside, okay? It means your header, your fonts, and the sides are all clear. You don't have like July stops here and then the one underneath goes over here. That's formatting issues, okay? And I'm gonna explain why I'm so finicky about formatting and spelling in a second. Um, if you have a heading, make a bolt, okay? Stay away from spelling and grammatical errors. If English is not your first language, make sure that you get a CV check, CV clinic right behind me. Go to your coaches. Reach out to people on LinkedIn or recruiters. Ask your, okay, ask your friends to have a look at it. I always just say with your friends, just be careful because friends don't want to hurt your feelings, especially if you give them something and it's completely not up to par. So your friend will be like, oh yeah, no, it's great. Just one or two small things I would change, even though they should be like, you know what, scrap the whole thing. You need to start from fresh, okay? Um, make sure your font size is easy to read. Remember, 11 to 12, Times New Roman, Cambria, Caligari, Georgia. That's what we're focusing on, nice and simple. Okay, the reason with the spelling and grammatical errors is in my first recruitment role, there was a senior manager who looked for mistakes first before actually viewing the CV. Now, these CVs had actually passed the applicant tracking system. Clearly, it wasn't as, as updated as it is now. However, they passed the applicant tracking system to say this person matches the job by 80%, 70%. The first thing he would look for is spelling, grammatical, and formatting errors. And you want to know why? How can I trust you to do your job if I can't trust you to make sure that the piece of your work, your history, your life experience, you've made a mistake on it and you haven't even taken the time to make sure that it's correct. How can I trust you to make, you know, basically live the mission to the values? It's really important, okay? Don't get bogged down by all these details that need to be in your CV. Focus on what skills and focus on the experience, your accomplishments, your interests that would make you a candidate that's like, yes, we want to get this person in. Okay? Last but certainly not least then, we have commitment. Okay? With college courses take a year, maybe two to write. There is a process that needs to go through. QQI has to approve them. Okay, you've got industry experts coming in being like, yeah, that's a great course. We definitely be looking for digital marketing um, marketeers in two years time when this person is due to graduate. Okay, however, look at COVID. If you had told me two and a half years ago, three years ago that I would be working majority from home, I would have laughed. I would have been like, me from home? This is my job. I stand up with the front and I talk to people. I can't give the same engagement. I can't give the same um, you know, inspiration. I can't really get people to like, focus on what I'm talking about if I'm on a little box, okay? But that is what the world is like. Technology is constantly advancing, which means that sometimes you might graduate and what you've learned might just be a little bit outdated, 
okay? So this is where you focus on certifications. You're showcasing to potential employers, this is where I aspire to work. This is the industry that I want to work in. And look at what I have done. I've done a certification online that was for free on LinkedIn. Okay, Google Garage has loads of things that you can do out for free. Uh, maybe attend a workshop. You know, there was a Power BI workshop that was hosted by um, the students of DBS for the Data Analytics Society. And they were able to actually get a search afterwards and put it on their CV. What does that tell me? Okay, this is someone, this is someone who's really interested. You know, look at them attending workshops. You know, look at them getting certifications. Look at them attending hackathons, okay? And when I say hackathons, I really more or less talk about finding an innovative solution to a problem. That's what I mean. That's exactly essentially what a hackathon is. It's just using technology to find a solution. So you could host your own, because they do it for business strategies as well. Okay, attend, look for these things. There's loads of them. Companies are always happy to host hackathons and sponsor other hackathons. If it's a sense that you can't find one for yourself, how about you get a few people together and you actually host it, okay? I'm available for public speaking if you need it or an MC, just saying. Um, join groups as well. Membership of professional bodies as well is really important, okay? So if you think about uh, psychology, you've got PSI, Psychology Society of Ireland. How can, I, how can you say, oh, I really wanna be a psychologist, but you're not in the, but you don't have a membership with them. But this is the society psychology like they do all things of psychology here in Ireland why are you not a member why are you not a member of the professional body of the industry that you're interested in working for ask yourself that question okay I know it's a little bit of money that's 20 25 euro I know I miss it too however if it's 20 25 euro for a year or two yet it's going to put you on the trajectory for your career that you want it's worth it right So let's just recap, okay? So that's exactly it. After, if I gave you any more tips, you guys would have fallen asleep, okay? And that's why we do it in sixes, okay? ATS compliance, all right? Make sure that you're using the right fonts, that you have the right keywords, okay? That it's in chronological order. Fonts are no more than 11 or 12, okay? Personal statement hack, remember, leave it till the very end and then ask yourself those questions. Okay, I will pop those questions up. I'll send it over to Grant, uh, Ireland so you guys can have access to that. So you'll know exactly what questions to ask. All right, um, who do you talk to? Make a note to start connecting with recruiters, hiring managers, um, anybody who's in a position to potentially pass your CV on or is in a position where they would actually be reviewing these CVs. A lot of people that are working um, in companies now, they actually are really open to mentorship. They want to encourage and motivate graduates in order to be able to actually go on and do what they want to do. A lot of them had to do it the hard way. So they're always open to share, do you know what, if you do one, two, three, you're going to be able to get where I am two years less than what I did. Okay, really important. Uh, focus on your accomplishments. Don't just let it bog you down to just regards your work, your involvement in the community, your involvement in college, personal achievements, personal accomplishments, note them down. Okay, they not only demonstrate your hard work ethic, but why you're so unique or why you have these key skills then as well. All right, um, remember simplicity is key, minimum. If you wanna be creative, have a portfolio on the side, but your CV needs to be very, very clear. Okay, and commitment. Show them that you aspire to work in that industry. Show them that you aspire to have a career and you wanna grow your career in that specific area. All right. Um, and that's literally it guys. So thank you so much um, for joining me today. If you do want to get in touch with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Okay, so it's just Nzaki Pathway on LinkedIn. I'm just gonna stay ahead of your way over here. Um, I'm happy to talk to you guys just in regards to anything that you want. Um, career coaching or if it's just to do with, I don't know, my career journey, how I went from a HR person to a career coach, always happy to help out. All right, perfect. Is there any questions? Yes. Do I have enough time? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, you found that very well. Uh, so thank you for that. Oh. That was really good. Thank you. Nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Yeah, so look, we have a few questions here. Okay. Some that you did cover, I think, in the course of the presentation, but as they were asked, and asked anyway, because it might be worth yep. just reiterating. No bother. The first one is about, you know, making it your CV on hand. So this yep. is more of a practical question. Someone's asked, if you make a CV from hand, 
Mm -hmm. Will that still work through NTS or will it get caught? Yes, it should be fine as long as it's saved in uh, the PDF version. Just make sure that when it is saved under PDF that nothing moves. Um, so just in regards to formatting, so if you are going to create it on camera, just make sure that you don't have a lot of icons and things like that that could be maybe just flagged when you're using an ATS system. I would always personally say just use Word and then transfer it into PDF. But if you can do that with Canva, but just check and make sure that nothing is out of place or that nothing has been changed into a different character as well, which is important, okay? Yeah. This is a question that does come up twice a lot. Yes. What is the ideal length for a CV? If it exceeds one page, is that seen as a negative? I have two minds about this, right? So I always think that if you don't have a lot of work experience, the one page is enough. It shouldn't be more than that. However, if you do have extensive work experience, and this is for even people who are changing careers, because you're going to be highlighting your transferable skills, right? I think it's okay to have the two pages. However, I wouldn't have it more than that. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, personally, I wouldn't, because you want to just make sure that your CV is all about relevancy. It's also, you don't want to bore them. So I'm not about to be like, mm hmm okay, when they were seven, they fell off their bike. Oh, look at that, they actually joined sports, and that's where they learned teamwork. I don't have that kind of time. Recruiters don't have that kind of time either. So short, succinct, to the point. This is who I am, this is what I have to offer, here's my experience, and we go on from there. And this is what I think you did answer over the course of the event, yeah. which is really, really great. I think this is important. So yeah. advice for people who put together a personal statement with the job of any work experience. Um, I would say to you, focus on your college and community and volunteering, okay? Um, the other thing as well is that a lot of people think that because you don't work in a company, you don't, you don't have a skill set. However, if you've never worked in digital marketing, can you still navigate Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, because you can teach yourself some of these things. And I think as an employer, potential employer, they'd actually be very impressed with the fact that this is someone who didn't have the technical skills whatsoever, but they decided to go on and do it themselves. On top of that, look at your interactions within college. If you don't have a lot, try to get involved in a little bit more. And there's also groups that are available for volunteering. Tech communities are actually huge and they're always looking for people to get involved. So your involvement in the likes of community groups, uh, volunteering, that is essentially what you can put into your um, personal statement at the top when you're talking about the skills that you have. And now it's my turn to make up a question. <laughs> you have to have a people difficult questions. Okay. So with the ATS, look, most companies do use these. Yeah. For smaller companies, where maybe they don't have an ATS and it is yeah. a person, it's a per human being, yeah. clicking through the CVs, can you go back to adding the icons and maybe showing with the flare, or would you still advise to apply the same system regardless of whether it's a smaller company or not? Um, I'm going to say it this way, right? I remember I had a manager who used to call me in every time they got Excel spreadsheets because there was just too much going on and it physically hurt her eyes, okay? So that's essentially what you want to focus on, okay? When you have all of these icons, emojis and all these things, you're taking away from the reason why you have a CV in the first place. You need to just document your experience. You need to document the impact that you can make, but where you've learned this, um, these skill sets, okay? So yes, a little bit, like, I'm, like I said, the little envelope is cute, ring, ring, I like that. However, just don't go too much. Like some people might have work history, then have a briefcase, then they have education, then have a book. Like it's not necessary, and that's what can kind of throw you off a little bit, all right? So a little bit is okay, but I'll always say simplicity is key, okay? Perfect. So I did have one question, but unfortunately that's all your time for. But Aww. I think you are around to take. Yes, I am. I am around. Right. Yeah. Get in touch with CK. You can as I said, uh, connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Perfect. So thank you again, CK, for your time. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great day.